This morning's scriptures come from Galatians 5, 22, 29. They are the same readings, but from two different translations. The theme is describing the gifts of the Spirit. In the first reading is a traditional rendition from the New International Version. And the second reading is from the Message, a more contemporary translation, from the New International Version. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Now the same reading from the message. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a holiness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else calls necessities is killed off for good, crucified. Since this is the kind of life we have chosen, the life of the Spirit, let us make sure that we do not just hold it as an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts but work out its implications in every detail of our lives. That means we will not compare ourselves with each other, as if one of us were better and the other worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. Thank you. you can you hear me all right? If not, raise your hand. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here with you again as your guest speaker. Last time I was here, I spoke about Little Red Riding Hood and how grandmothers and grandmothers' homes and even Red herself and the wolf are very vulnerable. I shared with you at that time that I thought the next time I was asked to preach, I would talk about Humpty Dumpty. <coughs> Our childhood stories always carry important messages if we can discern them. Today, though, is not the appropriate day to talk about Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Today is Pentecost or as some refer to it as the birthday of the Christian church. And the traditional scriptures come from the book of Acts, chapter 2. It describes how the disciples were gathered in the upper room when they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that came to rest on each of them. And they began to speak in, in other tongues and of all of the different nations of the world. And the people began to understand everything that they were speaking. Now outside, the God-fearing Jews from all nations heard them speaking. And yes, they understood. So then Peter stood up and reminds them of what the prophet Joel said. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And they will prophesy, see visions, and dream dreams. And then Peter then continues on with his sermon. <clears throat> I, for one, am so glad to hear that the Spirit of God will be poured out on all people, not just a select few. all people. And to me, this means that 
the world is not coming to an end soon. And that, yes, Jesus is not returning soon. I know, that's strange coming from me. In my ministry, I often was asked by some of my more fundamental conservative biblical literalists of when I was saved. Now, have you ever been asked that question? When were you saved? And how did you answer it? It's a hard one to answer. So I'm going to give you an answer. I'm going to give you a, a good response. Now, as a minister, I should be able to give the specific date, time, place, <laughs> and event of when that happened. It, for me, it didn't happen at one time. Like for many people, it is a process that continues to grow and ebb like the tide. But sometimes... Those who claim to have God's Spirit reveal otherwise. The person who asked me this question at one time, a member of my church, accused me of belittling his faith in one of my sermons. I replied, I didn't know such thing. He didn't believe me. So I gave him the sermon as I had written it and copies of the sermon are always available. He read it and said, I don't believe this, because you ad lib an awful lot in your sermon. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> so I then said, I will give you the audio tape. Today it would be a videotape, which in some cases might have been slowed down. <laughs> He came after listening to the audio tape and apologized. He said he never saw or heard that I had criticized his faith. Now this was in late October, and I always held an open house for the community, to which over 150 people came, including the mayor of the community. And he said, can I still come to your open house? Mainly because it was sort of the event of the season. We, we served shrimp and salmon and roast beef and chicken and turkey. And all the wine that you wanted to drink. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, absolutely, you're welcome. He then, I still have my question. When were you saved? I looked him square in the eye and I said, the day that Jesus died on the cross, that shut him up. He had nothing more to say. So how do you tell if a person has the spirit? What kind of spirit? lies within that person. What are the marks of the Christ-like spirit? I offer you the ones heard this morning in the traditional reading, but more so in the reading from the message. <clears throat> Hear them again. But what happens when we live God's way? God brings gifts into our lives much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, <coughs> and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates all of life, and all things, and all people. We find ourselves in loyal commitment, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. 
Now let me repeat a key phrase that's in that modern translation. <clears throat> God brings gifts into our lives much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Well, I think this might be referring to apple trees. And my father had apple trees when I was growing up as a child. And my brother and I would often go out and have to pick up what was known as the drops. So we did that. And oftentimes they were mushy. That's what I think is being referred to. So be aware that fruit sometimes gets rotten. <laughs> it gets spoiled. And it's unsuitable for consumption. In fact, it can make one sick. I think people think that they have the spirit when in reality they have the fruit that has spoiled and this is seen in their words, actions, and belief. <clears throat> you may recall eight months ago, September 2018, when many of us watched the hearings of Dr. Christine Ford and Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Following that hearing, I wrote a letter to our senators and numerous other senators expressing my dismay at the deportment of Judge Kavanaugh and asking them not to confirm him but to find another candidate. I posted my letter on Facebook and received replies both positive and negative. One came from a purported Christian, a pastor who supposedly led a church and who was related to me. His response was an example of the kind of person who I think claims to be a Christian, but who in his relationship to me showed his true nature. He accused me of yellow journalism and that whomever ordained me is more than likely a certified nitwit under lock and key. <laughs> he continues on. <laughs> You're a babbling buffoon in all Christian goodwill and should resign your position. He further says that I'm a huge disgrace to the ministry of my Lord Jesus Christ. He does conclude with the words, in Christ's service with love. <laughs> now what kind of spirit is in this person this is the issue that is paramount today as Christians on both sides evangelical and fundamentalists and the mainline progressive Christians who see God's spirit in an expensive love of all people so how is it that you and I can tell where a person lies on this continuum? For me, I look at their lives, their Facebook pages, if you wish, their tweets, <laughs> their Instagram. Are they balanced? Are they speaking of love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control? <laughs> or are they conceited, provoking, envying each other? Are they claiming exclusiveness, wanting everyone to believe as they do, legalism. 
as one who follows Jesus, the man of Nazareth, who is the Christ. I know that our God is still speaking, and that as John Robinson says, God has more light still to shed. For our God is one who gives, not takes. One who gives, not takes. A man <clears throat> fell in the subway tracks. He couldn't get out. He was lying there, and a train was fast approaching. One of the bystanders extended his hand and said, Give me your hand. Give me your hand. The man just stood there, confused, not knowing what to do. Another bystander, a stranger, jumped in and said, Take my hand. Take my hand. And immediately the man responded and took his hand. Asked later why he took the hand of the second person and not the first. It was explained that in his life he was always taking, never giving. You and I will not succumb to the hysteria and to the false emotion appearing real or fear. We continue to give the love that is in and through all people as you and I relate to those who disagree with us and as we let our actions reveal the living God who still cares about the disenfranchised, the immigrant, those of different faith tradition and sexual orientation, the poor and the homeless, the widow and the orphan. Look at the banner that's on the wall. For it proclaims our faith. Protect the environment. Care for the poor. Forgive often. Reject racism. Fight for the powerless. Share earthly and spiritual resources. Embrace diversity. Love God. Ways of implementing our faith. So as St. Francis of Assisi often said, preach the gospel always. And if necessary, use words. <laughs> <laughs> I am reminded of the hymn that I sang in junior choir. They will know we are Christians by our love. I hope you remember that. Mm -hmm. The words, we are one in the spirit, and we pray that unity will one day be restored. We will walk hand in hand with each other, and we'll spread the good news that God is in our land. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each person's dignity and save each person's pride. Let us continue to be the church, a people giving of the love of God, who through Christ shared God's love and grace to all people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.